Okay, here we have another example of this time of an electrical system. And uh, let's practice on how do we produce the bone graph model. So uh, the very first thing, first step that we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, um, put the step number one, which what will be a step number one? We recognize the elements, yeah? So what elements do we have in here? This one obviously is a resistive element. This is a C element over here. In a resistor, resistor, inductor in here, resistor here, inductor over here, and this is a source of effort in here. See, one clarification that so over here we, we have the element, but if we want to measure this, is measuring the voltage across that arc. So it's like putting a probe in there that you can do so. This is recognize the elements too. We need to use a one junction. To do what? Uh -huh. To represent distinct Okay So, why don't we recognize those currents here? Now that you could say this is I sub 1, right? And you could say this is I sub 2. And I would say this is I sub 3. Yeah? So why don't we do that? We just say, okay, 1 is over here for I sub 1. 1 is over here for I sub 2 and 1 is over here for I sub 3 ok very good so now what what do we need to do after we recognize the elements and after we have put that into our um, structure in here we, we do the ones Step number three, what would it be? What do we need to do? Hmm? Attach the elements to the yeah, attach the elements. Means that you would say that experience or that, yeah. those currents okay so I said there in this, those currents so why don't we do this we say this our experience is that current so this is going to be this uh, is E over here with the value of the voltage P of T this C element also experiences this is you know with the C in here now nothing else because uh, you know in between these two we have a relative current between these two and between these two so we, w we will have to go to our number four now. What do we do? So we say use zero junctions to do what? Represent 
to represent differences yeah and then uh, you could say also you could say those differences differences also represented by one junctions those those results you may say to make it clear those results differences okay what I'm trying to say is that if you do 1 minus 2 you have you use this one to say this means I1 minus I sub 2 this one here means like this I sub 2 no 3 minus I sub 2 and then in here I sub 1 minus I sub 2 would be like this This is I sub one minus I sub two, right? No, I sub one minus yeah. I sub one minus I sub two. Up here is three, so we don't mess up. Yeah, we saw the difference. Now, what about number five? Why do we do this? We need to attach the elements What the elements? That experience Those current differences Yeah. So the difference in here is going to be by this R element and the, of course this I element over here. This one in here will have only this R. And in between these two we also have an R element and we have the I element. And this would be the bone graph model of this. I think uh, step number six would be to complete the power flow on causal marks. I need to slow down to make sure that this is <coughs> very legible. So you, you can you read it okay? Okay, very good. So in here all is left is to assign those causal marks. So we're gonna do here to the I element in here, first to the sources, because that's the procedure. To the sources. That doesn't do anything here. Then the I element in integral form that makes just like this and on this one we put also integral form and this will have to go like this okay so we got that one 
in here we have this is interesting in here I think we may end up with some algebraic loops in here this is the C element this is as far as we can go you see what happened here this is interesting it, it, it shows that the circuit has an algebraic loop the computer the causal marks cannot be completed when that happens you need to make a decision and choose one for one of the elements and propagate the others so in this case I am going to arbitrarily uh, choose this one and I'll assign this one in doing that this becomes like that and that is as far as it goes could be that it has more than one algebra loop in here mm -hmm. so this is fine this is okay mm -hmm. the, the upper left resistor uh, needs to be reversed this one? yeah in what sense? this has got to go like this Okay, so it we 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 will have to choose this one. If I do this, then all these other ones will have to be like this. And if that's the case, then this has to be like this. And if that's true, then this has to be like this. Oh no, no, no the opposite mm, in this case we'll see what happens and say this is like this so when you have two like this it makes this like this and when you do that then this be like this yep. this is this is complete <coughs> that complete <coughs> the <coughs> the assigning and building of this electrical system the numbering of the bonds I will relegate to the computer program although if you enter them in here it's okay to um, the program would automatically assign the numbers unless you want a specific number then you need to build it the way you want it other ways it automatically assigns the numbers and of course that has the advantage to uh, be a general variable general a name, it's computer generated name, it goes by the type of element and the bond number. That's how, how it does it. But this is the other uh, example I wanted to show you for, um, for generating electrical systems.